Hi, English 090. I'm Claire Lobdell, the librarian, and I wanted to make a quick video to show you some of those tools that we talked about in class that you can use to find sources for your day in the life essay that will give you um, context and information and answer your questions about what your ancestor or the person you've chosen in history, what their life was like at the time when they lived. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you. Um, just set that up. Okay, so I'm going to start on the GCC homepage, gcc.mass.edu. From here, I am going to click on the library, which is always in that top menu bar, the Neyman Watson Library. And then I'm going to go to this green films and video button. The one that I want to show you is films on demand. So when I click on this, because I'm on campus, it's going to take me right into films on demand. If you click on it from off campus, you're going to first be taken to a screen that asks you to log in using your library card number, which is that number on the back of your library card, but without spaces. It's also going to ask for a password, which has been set as your last name in all capital letters. When we were in class, I showed you how to look at the archival films and videos, and I'll show you how to get there again. But the other thing I wanted to show you is the advanced search, because I think the advanced search works a little better than the general one. So for example, one of the students in class was um, chose to do their day in the life on someone who lived in Hawaii um, in the early 20th century. So I'm going to search for Hawaii. And rather than looking at all the films, I'm just going to limit it um, down here where it says all subjects. I'm going to change this to history. So I'm just focusing on films that talk about Hawaii in history. And some of the things that come up are segments, um, so pieces of larger films, and some of them are full videos. So for example, there's this Conquest of Hawaii that's an hour and a half long. Um, it's broken into different segments. So for example, Westerners arrive in Hawaii, um, independent Hawaiian nation, Western land law, um, annexation, things like that. Um, you know, who knows, maybe this video might be helpful for the student who is doing the project on Hawaii. So the other thing here, um, if you go into that upper left hand corner, you'll see those three horizontal lines. If you click on that, you can get to where it says archival films and newsreels. These are historic videos. Um, and the default screen that it takes you to is all the archival films and newsreels that, that are in here, but you might want to limit it to your particular point in time. So for example, um, the Jazz Age and Depression, so films from 1919 to 1938. And, you know, some of these might be useful in giving you a sense of, um, what that particular time that you're writing about looked like, you know, what sort of clothes people were wearing, what the vehicles looked like, um, you know, what a street um, in 1920s looked like. All right, the next one that I'm going to go to is History Pin, which is www.historypin.org. This is that website where um, museums and archives and individual people attach pictures to um, Google Maps and Google Street View so that you can see, you know, what a place looked like at another point in time. So I'm going to search for Boston Waterfront. It's going to take a second. Um, and anywhere you see these green numbers, those are places where people have 
pinned images or documents. So for example, someone has pinned a picture of this building, this um, India Wharf building to this site. It's no longer there, but it was in this spot um, from 1804 to 1962. As I mentioned in class, History Pin is not just a US website. There are um, images and documents from all around the world, um, all around the globe, but you know some places have more than others. Finally, the last website that I wanted to show you is the one for the Digital Public Library of America. Oh my goodness, let me spell. All right, Digital Public Library of America. And the, um, the URL for this, the web address is just dp.la. The Digital Public Library of America ingests or um, takes in content from all sorts of libraries and museums across the US. Um, things like the National Archives, um, down to a lot of little um, Massachusetts um, uh, historical societies and museums. So for example, I'm going to search for Greenfield, Massachusetts and see what comes up. Oh, actually, rather than Greenfield MA, so 94 results come up for Greenfield MA. I'm gonna actually search for the whole Massachusetts. and see what happens. Okay, so there's a mix. There are, the second one is a book. Um, actually, the first, these uh, second and third ones are books. There's also this picture of a market day in Greenfield from 1928. So this is what the page looks like on DPLA. If I wanna see the full image so that I can really zoom into it, if I click on that, it's going to take me to another website, so Historic New England. Um, here I can, you know, zoom in, see a little more um, what was going on in this place, a little more information about it. Um, at the Digital Public Library of America, like we looked at with Scott, um, there are some special collections of materials about different topics. So you could go to browse by topic or exhibitions and you'll find things that are a little more in depth. So like American Civil War, um, Civil Rights Movement, Immigration since 1840. I know um, a few of you were looking at um, people who immigrated to the US. When you come back to the library, when I see you again, you're gonna to come to the library. We're going to look at how to find books that might be helpful for your project. And we'll also spend some time um, working one-on-one -on -one to find information for your individual projects and answer those questions that you had about what your person experienced um, at the point in time that they lived. I look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks, bye.